For your edification and amusement, we now present Education Exploration, or What Kids Need, in three acts with prologue and epilogue. Prologue, in which the hero confronts an old nemesis and recalls a whimsical group of fifth graders. I have been teaching in public schools since 1990. Uh, the last, uh, most of that time has been spent in Portland Public Schools, where I am known to HR as 007392. At school, I am called Kevin, Mr. Kevin, Teacher Kevin. I've been in Title I grade schools for the past 22 years. Um, so a couple of years ago, I was in my classroom after school when the door opened and I looked up and saw a man who I immediately recognized as a former student, and I froze. In that moment, my mind traveled back 10 years to recall a fifth grade boy who, uh, who was difficult, combative, and angry. I couldn't see any happiness in his future whatsoever. And there he was in my doorway, uh, five inches taller with broad shoulders. And I had a feeling that I was going to get an unexpected update on how that future was playing out. And uh, I just hoped that it wasn't going to hurt too much because, you see, He'd been in a class of fifth graders that was memorable for its whimsical exploration of chaos, violence, and police visitation in the line of duty. One week into the school year, I knew that it was going to be a long year and that drastic action would be called for. But what would that action uh, be based on? As a teacher, my goal is to create rich experiences for kids. And that begins with the question, what do kids need? Act one, in which the hero expounds on what kids need. Kids need art. The arts connect us with our humanity. Uh, probably everyone in this room has had some strong formative arts experience in their life, and I know that's true for me. Julie Andrews is largely responsible for who I am today. My parents took me to see this uh, movie when I was a wee lad, and that's when I fell in love with musical theater. I probably went to school the next day and raised my hand and said something like, my mommy and daddy took me to see a movie about Nazis, and I loved it. <laughs> Children need to learn from more than one source of information. For instance, when my wife tells me it's time to take out the garbage, I just don't get it until I hear that from a second source of information. Actually, that's not a good example at all. <laughs> Let's try this one. Here's a dot of light, one dot. Not too remarkable until you add a second dot. And now we see that two dots make a line. The brain is hardwired to connect dots with a, a solid line, even when there is no light or line actually there. This is why traffic lights come in pairs. We see the red light, but we're actually tending to the, the implied horizontal line connecting the lights. And of course, if we're sending email, then we don't see any traffic lights at all. It used to be that people ran red lights. Now we can't even get them to go through green lights. When the kid learns something in school, the information goes right here. The, if you present that information from a different source, it goes right here. Two dots form a line to create strong learning in the kid's brain. Kids need risk. Now, school is all about uh, safety, and uh, you can't argue with that, except that I do argue with that a little bit. Risk is where you try yourself out to see what you're made of in life. We don't need risk, but it's a lot easier to grow ri with risk. Risk, uh, you cannot, and you can't have risk without danger. It's categor categorically impossible. Um, well, risk, is, risk adds nutrition to the educational diet and makes, uh, it helps children grow big and strong. Children need their lives, their souls to be lit up. I look around at school for joy, and I don't see as much as I'd like. I'm not looking for a constant euphoria, but uh, I ask myself, where is, the, where is the joy? Where is the excitement in school? Fortunately, joy is not yet a mandated standard, though it probably will be someday and will sound like joy. Pupils by the end of first grade will demonstrate joy in the following manners. <laughs> I don't know. Um, kids need to feel connected to something bigger than themselves. It's rare for a class to be called upon to commit to some big project that takes a long time to achieve and is really difficult and makes a difference in the world. The slide you're looking at right now is a reminder to you to ask me later about the bonus anecdote that I have on this topic. It's really good. <laughs> Kids need a voice. Kids need to express themselves in unique and varied ways that support their interests and their inclinations, including like chop saws. Act two, in which the hero takes action and discovers a grand unified theory of pedagogy. 
So you're probably saying to yourself right now, okay, 007392, aka Teacher Kevin, that's all very nice, but what are you doing about this? Well, it's curious that you, that I am supposing that maybe you're asking me that question because I have an answer to that. In 2003, um, my passion for musical theater collided with my uh, teaching life when I discovered the Creating Original Opera program run by the Metropolitan Opera in New York City that shows teachers how to turn their class into a theater company and produce an original show. Fireworks went off in my head. I knew I had found my own personal grand unified theory of pedagogy. I knew in that moment that I was going to go through the program and that my life would never be the same again. So that summer, I went to New York for the training, and the following year, my colleague and I, we turned our class into a theater company. They called themselves the Titanic 51 Kids Opera Company. I was dubious about the Titanic part, <laughs> but they seemed to want that. They called their show a visit to Grandpa's farm where a girl finds her power. And here they are. They also performed one evening uh, downtown at the Winningstad Theater, and they were magnificent. And did I mention that these were second graders at a full-on Title I school that had a lot of language, English language learners, including our script prompter, who came to us speaking no English at all, and by the end of the year had memorized the script and uh, spoke English. So let's check this opera experience against some of the uh, needs that I've outlined. Was there risk? Yes, performing in front of people is risky. Asking second graders to wire a, a light board and uh, wire tin can footlights, think about that, that's risky. <laughs> Did it light up the soul? Yeah, these second graders love performing, uh, doing the opera project. Was there commitment? Well, not at the beginning of the year. On the first day, we said, congratulations, you are now an opera company, followed by silence and, is it lunchtime yet? <laughs> but by the end of the year, they were fully on board with this opera project. So. Um, we see that musical theater is good for um, kids, giving them what they need most of the time. A few years later, I was at a different school where I crashed into that uh, fifth grade class from HE Double Hockey Sticks. I was up against the ropes early in the year and I uh, did what I always do when things get desperate. I decided to put on a show. So I started writing a musical about U.S. history. I didn't know if these jaded fifth graders would take it or not. Uh, they would probably scoff, that seemed likely, but I had to find out. So one day I brought in a song I wrote about the Salem Witch Trials called My Name is Betty, and I sang it for them. My name is Betty, I am 11, I live in Salem. I finished the song and waited. They looked at each other, they looked at me, they were like, dude. And I was like, dude? And they were like, dude. And I was like, high five, high five, high five. OK, no high fives. But I got a green light for the show. And as it turns out, uh, I got a lot of red lights and traffic jams as well. Because doing that show with those kids was a bloody nightmare. They fought me at every step. It was like dragging a mule through the mud. But we persisted. And uh, the week before the show went on, a miracle happened. From the swirling mass of fifth grade chaos, a theater company emerged with direction and focus and, and teamwork. I couldn't believe it. So the show went on, audiences loved it, and history was learned. And I thought, ha, huh, learning history, American history through musical theater. And this was years before Hamilton, I'll have you know. <laughs> so I continued writing academic musicals, and then I asked myself the question, well, what would it be like taking these shows on the road and sharing them with other kids in other schools? And that is when um, the present chapter of my life opened, uh, began. Act three, in which the hero starts a musical theater company and becomes rich beyond his wildest dreams. Four years ago, I started Jester Educational Theater, a uh, nonprofit musical theater company, uh, which uh, educates students, um, <laughs> educating students uh, laugh by laugh. My goal uh, was fourfold. I wanted to perform original musicals. I wanted to, uh, about uh, academic things, academic musicals. I wanted to um, perform with live musical accompaniment. I wanted to perform in Title I schools. And I wanted to perform with um, older teens and adults, meaning basically professional performers. Our first year, we performed Alice in Mathland for grades K through 2, which is about Alice in Mathland. 
Last year, we performed the revolutionary review, uh, being the same musical that my fifth graders performed so many years ago. And this season, we are performing the Pumphrey Family Reunion, our all Oregon musical uh, that goes with the fourth grade social studies curriculum. So these days, I'm giving lots of kids a chance to see high quality theater. And the question is, does watching a show uh, have the same benefits as being in a show? Well, let's check this in a couple of ways. Kids get history in their classroom, then they come, it goes right here, then they come to see uh, the same history played out on stage. Goes right here, a line of learning is formed. They learn the history a lot better. Check. Um, risk. Is there any, ri there's no risk involved in watching a musical, but what we lose in risk, we gain in lighting up the soul. I know from audience responses of sustained laughter and thoughtful discussions with classes after performances and written student responses that, yeah, souls are lit up and kids learn. The brain loves to learn when emotions are engaged and heightened. So it turns out that yes, musical theater is good for kids on stage or in the audience. Presently, I teach English as a second language at Bridger, a Title I school in outer East Portland. And I'm doing uh, theater with the kids. My colleague and I run the uh, middle school ESL program as a drama company during first period. They will present their theatrical opus at school and at the Winning Sad Theater later this year. Two of our company members speak no English, including a performer. So it's a grand experiment at the nexus of theater arts and English language learning. And you're all welcome to come to Bridger or the Winning Stad to see the results later on this year. I am fortunate to have a life filled with musical theater. I have a front row seat to see the, the power of the arts on kids in the audience at professional performances. I can see firsthand the power of the arts on kids in theater companies committed to a big cause. I see learning and I see joy. Both are great. When combined, they are magic. Epilogue, in which the nemesis is unmasked, balance is restored. Concluding remarks, bows, curtain. So there I was in my classroom looking up at this former student, quaking in my boots a little bit. But my fears were uh, unneeded. He was all smiles. He had come to thank me for the theater arts experiences I had given him as a fifth grader. And now he was a professional dancer and aspired to a career in pediatric dentistry. <laughs> pediatric dentistry? Who could have predicted this? Now, I hesitate to share the dancing part because that's a bit of a red herring on my end. My goal is not to pre uh, create artists and theater folk. My goal is to provide rich arts experiences that can be the basis for a long-lasting education. Of course, I was privately and personally delighted that he is dancing. Teachers rarely ever see the uh, results of their efforts, but this one kid showed me how just one year of theater arts at age 10 can echo down through the years in a person's soul. That is why I put kids on stage, and that is why Jester Educational Theater educates students one laugh at a time. Thank you. <laughs>